Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam and you are watching Flick Connection. Welcome to another episode where I'm going to tell you about the 20 best movies you can currently watch on Amazon Prime. I just did a list of 20 horror movies you can currently watch on Amazon Prime. So there are not any horror movies on this list. I'll put a link to that video in the description though, so be sure to check it out. But these are going to be kind of random selections that haven't really fit on any of my recent lists that are really great movies. Some of them are new releases, some of them are classics, some of them are remakes of classics, and some of them are the remakes and the classics because they're both on Amazon Prime. And first up on this randomized list is Mid 90s, which is a very new release. It just came out last year, and it's actually directed by Jonah Hill. And it, it's it's a pretty touching story about a young boy who's like trying to find himself, who sort of uh, uh, adopts skater culture. Even though the, the centerpiece is like a 12 year old boy, this is not for younger kids. Uh, it's it's, it's pretty intense. This kid finds himself in some pretty adult situations. However, it is a good little indie movie. I think had I seen it and not known Jonah Hill did it, I would have been really shocked to find out that he did it. Knowing that he did it made me think about the fact that he was the writer-director the entire time, which didn't ruin it, but I definitely had a different experience watching this one because of it. Another real recent release that did not make it onto my horror list for a couple of reasons. One, they dropped it right after I had recorded that episode, but also I don't really find the Suspiria remake that came out last year to really fit into a horror movie. Now, it is technically a horror movie, but if you go into this one expecting horror, you're going to be disappointed. This is more of a gothic type of a thing, but it's pretty well done. The only downside is it's not as good as the original. I recommend watching the original over this one, but this one's interesting. It's got it's got some good elements to it and some flawed elements to it. This is kind of a high brow horror movie. There are a couple of scenes that are terrifying, but basically what you get with this is what for the purposes of this video we'll call a coven of witches that work out of this ballet academy and it, it's best to know very little, but this is an art house horror, so be prepared for that going in. It is very well done. Now for something completely different. The next three days is a prison break movie starring Russell Crowe, and the interesting thing about this one is he's trying to break his wife out of prison. Now, the ads and marketing for this one years back didn't entice me at all. It looked like a kind of cheesy action movie. However, it's not. While there is sort of an action sequence in it, it is a very well pieced together thriller about a guy trying to break his wife out of prison. They, the setup is decent. The execution works out. You get sort of elements of a heist movie that's a little more low key, but it worked for me. I thought it was great and it was surprisingly good because again, I, I thought the marketing for this one sold a completely different movie. For an absolute classic that I'd need to spend no time on, Fargo, it's one of my favorite Coen Brothers movies. Really, probably one of my favorite movies of all time. Certainly top 25, maybe close to the top 10. I really, really love everything about this movie. If you've never seen it, it's my strongest recommendation off of this list. An incredible thriller. There's a lot of jokes and stuff associated with this movie, but it's so well put together, so well performed by everybody, and just a real, just kind of master class in piecing together a thriller from from beginning to end just everything about this movie works so well the humor the the suspense it, it all plays together perfectly so be sure to watch it before it leaves because i don't expect it'll be on here forever now here's a remake and the original that you can currently watch on amazon prime that's death wish now they actually have the entire death wish series i'm just focusing on the 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 original and the remake of the original now the original stars charles bronson it is a great great movie it's got some intense sequences including jeff goldblum assaulting a woman it's one of his first roles uh if you've never seen jeff goldblum assault anybody uh it, it's pretty gnarly, um, but it does set things in motion in the original and basically just puts Charles Bronson on the warpath. And the thing I really like about Death Wish is it feels real. He's not like some action hero that just like starts, you know, murking people on the streets of Manhattan. He acquires a gun. He starts walking the streets at night, kind of waiting for someone to attack him. And this is at a time when 
Manhattan, at least most of Manhattan was was way more dangerous than it is today. Um, and it just, it, it's a very good movie, really well played out. The remake got a lot of flack. Now, it was released not long after a shooting, and at this point I can't really keep up. I don't remember which one it was, but the critics just annihilated this movie. But it's directed by Eli Roth, and I think it's one of his better efforts. It's a decent remake. Really, the only problem I had with it is, as much as I like Bruce Willis, he's pretty stiff in this one. Um, he's pretty much phoning it in these days. The problem with remakes, it, again, it's just not as good as the original, but... In my opinion, it is still very much worth watching. On a very similar note, without the remake, The Mechanic, the original one with Charles Bronson, I like even better than Death with than Death Wish. Who? But D Death Wish is a much more serious movie, whereas The Mechanic's a little more fun. He's a hitman that takes people out, but like, for instance, the opening hit, instead of just shooting somebody, he, he figures out a way to shoot at them and cause them to have a heart attack. As silly as that sounds, it plays out really well on screen. And you kind of get this espionage element with this movie. It's really fun and cool, too. Like, Charles Bronson's always really cool, and this one's no exception. If, you, if you've never seen it, I, again, I highly recommend watching The Mechanic before it's gone. For another kind of mercenary, hitman type of a thing, Ronin is a really great De Niro movie. One of, one of the better movies he did kind of post-Scorsese. Uh, I, I, I like everything about it. The cast is great. But the chase sequences in this movie are still among the best ever filmed. Not the best, but it, I mean, we're talking top five really really well orchestrated so you get good action you get good kind of spy hitman stuff again i cannot stress how good the car chases are and that is something that is so difficult to shoot there's so many literally moving parts um, that you have to be able to tell the story with it and put the camera in the right place over and over and over again at what appear to be high speeds and be able to keep the viewer oriented so we know what car we're at who's chasing who who's where who's between what who's shooting at who it that's a tricky thing to do in terms of filmmaking and ronan does it almost the best ever roadhouse is i i want to say a guilty pleasure it's not that bad of a movie it's got some silliness but i love patrick swayze and and just a movie like this where he's just kicking people's ass and it's this movie's way more badass than i think people give it credit for i like it a lot yes there are the cheesy elements but it's just like i said with the other it's fun and it's rewatchable in my opinion it's got some classic lines some classic elements the the remastering of it looks great it doesn't look like that old of a movie and again it's just i I don't watch it often, but whenever I do, I forget just how badass this one actually is. And a related story to remakes, Dune is currently available on Amazon Prime. Now, this one is actually directed by David Lynch, and even if you don't like David Lynch movies, this one does not necessarily feel like a David Lynch movie. It has David Lynch moments in it, but this was a heavy, heavy, big budget studio production, and they didn't really let him do all the crazy shit David Lynch usually likes to do. He hated it, yet you get a little bit more of an accessible movie. Like for me, I personally would have loved to see what David Lynch would have wanted to do with this. However, I think this appeals to more people as a result, but it's this big, epic sci-fi movie that's really really incredible and it's so good they're actually in the process of remaking it from the same director as blade runner 2049 they're filming it now it's got an incredible cast it's going to come out in about a year year and a half so i'll be talking more about that one on the podcast channel leading up to its release because i'm super excited for that one you can check out a link to that podcast channel and subscribe over there in the description below and as we wrap up the first half of this list, I'm going to talk about another remake, Papillon. Now, Papillon is a Steve McQueen movie that also stars Dustin Hoffman. The remake is essentially, I don't want to say a shot-for-shot -shot remake, but it, it is a scene-for-scene -scene remake, almost, of the original. And it stars Charlie Hunnam and Rami Malek. Now, Malek got a lot of praise for Bohemian Rhapsody, won all kinds of awards, and I do think he's a pretty intense and great actor. He's a little odd in this one. He really seemed kind of forced to me. 
And as with all the others I've talked about, again, I do not hate remakes. I think there is value in them. Um, I liked this one. It's beautifully shot. Really, really beautifully shot. And it tells a few parts of the story that got left out of the original, which I thought was great because I am a fan of the original. Uh, I enjoyed the experience of watching it, but it is not as good. It, it just isn't. I, I highly recommend seeking out and watching the original. But if you're a fan of the original, I, I feel like if you're like me, you'll at least like the experience of watching this remake. Before the second 10 on this list, if you like this type of content, definitely click that subscribe button and be sure to click that bell icon because otherwise there's no point. YouTube will not notify you when I put new videos out like this one. All right, now the bank job is in my opinion, a really great heist movie and one of the better Jason Statham movies to have come out ever. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of his. I even like his bad movies. I enjoy seeing him in movies like The Meg, but this is one of the better ones that's not like got him playing a, a you know, Guy Ritchie gangster. And it takes place in the 70s, so they're using all old technology and walkie-talkies with the really long antennas and stuff. It's got, it's got a really cool vibe like that. It's got a slow pace to it because they're planning out this heist and, and surveying and doing all of that but it's fun and eventually of course it does pick up with an actual heist. The reason I even point out that it's got a slow pace is because despite that slow pace, it still manages to be really fun and kind of funky and cool. A really great, one of the better, I think, recommendations off of this list if you never bothered to watch it. I, I, I would imagine very few of you watching this video would be disappointed watching the, the bank job. On a similar note, The Score is another heist movie starring Robert De Niro and Edward Norton. Edward Norton gives an incredible performance here because part of his character is mentally handicapped, sort of, uh, and it, it works really, really well. He plays that character really well. De Niro plays it pretty straight, but he plays it well. And The Score has just enough that's unique and different in how they go about the heist that makes it really, really entertaining to watch on top of the, the great performance from Edward Norton and the, the good enough one from De Niro. California, that's California with a K, stars David Duchovny and Brad Pitt and a evil Brad Pitt. This is one of the few, if not the only time, you ever see Brad Pitt playing the bad guy. This is early in his career, and he does a great job. He really, really can creep you out in this movie. Uh, this has got a little bit of a cult following. I know a lot. It's from the 90s. A lot of people like it. Um, if you never saw it, it, it's a treat. It really is a treat to get to watch somebody as famous as Brad Pitt in the beginning of his career play completely against his type and, and kill it. Like, he does a great job. This is a creepy, weird movie, and it works really, really well, and it's got that great 90s vibe that you can only get from a movie that actually came out of the 90s. Now, for one that I completely slept on, I, I, I didn't know anything about this one, actually. The Gift is written by Billy Bob Thornton. He wrote it after Sling Blade. It's directed by Sam Raimi, who's most famous for the Evil Dead series and Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man movies. And it stars Kate Blanchett, Keanu Reeves as a bad guy, Greg Kinnear, Hilary Swank, Giovanna Ribisi, and Kate, Katie Holmes it, nude a couple of times. Like, how, that, how did I not hear about this movie? But uh, Kate Blanchett plays a psychic, like a, she breeds tarot cards in this small, like, Louisiana town. Keanu Reeves is an abusive husband. There's a court drama in the middle of the movie. There, there's supernatural elements. I actually had watched this one in preparation for my horror list, and it really is not. It's gothic, but it's not really a horror movie. So I couldn't put it on that list, but I'm happy to tell you about it here. If you never saw this one, it's not great. And I think that's why time has kind of forgotten it, but it is really good. I mean, it's, it, it's about as good as it sounds. It's just not better than the sum of its parts. A great World War II movie that I have loved for a really long time is Enemy at the Gates. I think this one is criminally underrated. It came out kind of on the coattails of Saving Private Ryan, and it's not nearly as good of a film, but it starts Jude Law. He plays a sniper, and this is a true story. He plays a sniper, and you get a lot of really great sequences out of that. Ed Harris is in it. 
Ron Perlman is in it, Rachel Weisz, and it looks incredible. It looks, the production looks like it's on the level of Saving Private Ryan. You get this amazing, just this amazing story. It, it just works so well, and it's very, very epic. It really is great. I think because it fell short of the, the expectations that a movie like Saving Private Ryan had set, um, time has kind of forgotten this one as well, but if you never saw this one, you could watch it and almost swear it's a new release, except for the fact that some of those actors are, <laughs> they look they look like they're about 15 years younger than they, than they do now, but still a great World War II movie that deserves more eyeballs. Now, a lot of people talk about Lost in Translation. It's, you know, rated as one of the best movies ever made. Top 100, not one, you know. But uh, it, it is Sofia Coppola's big breakout movie. However, before that, she did a movie that I like more called The Virgin Suicides. This is a really great movie. It's a coming of age thing about some teenage girls. It, it's set, I believe, in the 70s, early 80s. It might be like 1980. It's got some really great performances, a funky vibe. I am not really a fan of her directing work. It's gotten sort of like... I don't know, thinner, like it, it, the substance is, is less and less like in her work, especially some of her latest work, but this had more meat on the bone to me. It was a little heavier. Um, it does involve some suicide and it's, it's, again, it's heavy, but not necessarily overly dark or anything. It's, it's, I thought this one was really grounded and, and, and felt much better than even Lost in Translation, even though I really do like that movie. If you never saw this one and you're, you're a fan of her movies, you owe it to yourself to check this one out. Kind of a similar vibe uh, comes from American Beauty. Now, this one won an Academy Award for Best Picture. Um, I cannot remember kind of what it was up against, but I gotta say, this one might be deserved. I mean, it's really, really well put together. It's kind of a simple story with complexities, but Sam Mendes directed it. He's an amazing director. He went on to do movies like Jarhead, Skyfall, just an incredible director. And it, this is this is among his best work. I mean, to be able to tell a story like this and make it so riveting, and it appealed to such a wide audience when it came out. And, and to have such touchy subject matter in it and for to still appeal to so many people, I think is a testament to how good this movie actually is. Now, if you can't wrap your head around watching a movie with Kevin Spacey in it, that's why I've got 19 other picks on this list, technically 20 other picks. Ali, starring Will Smith, is actually directed by Michael Mann, who is one of my favorite directors, and I love this movie. I, I forget how good it is. It's so epic, it's so, like sweeping it just the cinematography in this movie is beautiful the music is amazing will smith gives probably the best performance of his career in this movie my only complaint with this movie is it's a little over long i hate saying that but i i think that that story the story that they tell with the movie stretched it out a little bit too much and and as a result i don't watch this movie very often but anytime i watch it it's it's amazing. Even if this wasn't a true story, if someone wrote this and it was it was fiction, this would be such an amazing amazing movie. But to know that this this is a, a true story, it just makes it that much better. And it's it's not my favorite Michael Mann movie, but it it, it really is one of his best behind Heat, of course. All right, we're in the home stretch. Spun is one of the weirdest movies I've talked about on this list so far. It is a drug movie, and it, when I say drug, I'm talking about meth. And it stars John Leguizamo, Jason Schwartzman, Mickey Rourke, Brittany Murphy. It, it's got a great, great cast. It's really weird. It's shot in this really bizarre, gritty way that's kind of off-putting. You gotta think, it's almost like the train spotting of meth. It has a different flavor and a different vibe, but it's that level, almost. It's so good and it, it's got such a small audience. This movie did not really get seen when it was released. If you like yourself a good gritty drug movie, uh, this, is, this is almost top shelf stuff that I know a lot of people have missed. And I'm actually gonna close this one out with a documentary. I don't talk about documentaries a lot, but this is a really fantastic one. It's called An Honest Liar. And it's actually about uh, a guy who spends his life, he's, a, he's I wanna say a magician, an illusionist, but kind of an ex-illusionist who really spends his time dispelling 
psychics. He, he goes through a lot of time and effort to try to educate people and teach people um, that, that, you know, people that are taking your money and telling you they can find your loved ones. Basically, people like Kate Blanchett in The Gift. Uh, he, he really sort of exposes them. And not just not just those people, like televangelists that take a lot of money from people and buy private jets with it, uh, that pretend that they can talk to loved ones. He not only tells people that it's fake, he actually scientifically goes through and does like sting operations to bust people like this. Uh, and I think he has all good intentions. It's a really fascinating and interesting documentary. I highly recommend checking that one out. My last mention of a movie on this list is A Cold War. Uh, this one just got released last year. It was either nominated or I think it I think it was nominated for Best Foreign Film, and it is an Amazon original. Uh, it's available to watch now. I have not seen it. It looks beautiful. It looks like it's shot really, really well, and obviously it's won all sorts of awards, so I will be watching that one. If it deserves to be on a list in the future, I'll put it on there. If you have some movies you'd like me to review, let me know in the comments, but definitely let me know which movies from this list you plan on watching, but I will keep making videos like this one as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking this one out, and you will see me on the next one. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so a number of ways. You can become a Patreon supporter like one of these fine people. You can just like, comment, share. People forget to share. If you share this video with friends, it does even better. Anything like that actually helps me grow the channel so I can do more and more. Not just lists like this. I also do Netflix, by the way. But not just lists like this. I can do more and more fun stuff with guests and things like that. So stay tuned. Click subscribe if you haven't already. If you're still here, you definitely should be clicking that subscribe button and the bell. But stay tuned. I got more top 20s coming up later in the week, including, of course, a, a, Net, a Netflix top 20.